Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti from anthonymorganti.com and this is part three of our Learn Adobe Photoshop Elements 11 training tutorial video series. And in this episode, we're going to talk about Adobe Camera Raw. Hopefully everyone shoots raw files in their camera and if you do, when you use Elements 11, you go into Adobe Camera Raw to do some pre-modifications to the photograph before you sent it over to the Elements 11 photo editor. Before we do that though, if you guys could do me a favor and subscribe to my channel here on YouTube and like and comment in the videos and visit my website. I'd really appreciate it. Okay, let's get started. We're going to open Photoshop Elements 11 and we're going to go into the organizer. Um, remember in part one I loaded uh, a few p photographs into um, the Elements 11 organizer. <clears throat> this is one of them. We're going to do this olive, owl butterfly and we're going to click down here at the very bottom it, there's the editor icon. We're going to click on that. Now that's going to open uh, Photoshop Elements 11's editor but because it's a raw file it's going to open up another program called Adobe Camera Raw and in Adobe Camera Raw we could do some um, processing to the photograph before we send it over into Elements 11. Um, to give you a little idea of what's going on here, this is very similar to L Adobe Lightroom. Um, as a matter of fact, if you had uh, Photoshop CS6 or CC, um, Adobe Camera Raw in that program is identical to the develop module Lightroom. In Elements 11 it's a little watered down but it's still very effective and you could do a lot of, um, of processing to the photograph. Um, if you guys are more interested in an in-depth look at Lightroom I have a lot of training on YouTube on my website on Lightroom. Um, I think I'm up to 11 or 12 videos on uh, explaining um, how to use Adobe Lightroom so check that out if you're interested. All right. Now, first of all, we got three different panels over here on the right where um, we could do some modifications to the photograph. The first is the basic panel, and that's where we just do some basic temperature tint, and you could see exposure, so on adjustments here. The next icon over is the detail panel where we could sharpen and add some noise reduction. And the next one is the camera calibration where you could actually calibrate the photograph to the type of camera you have, uh, and, and um, we'll do that, get into that in a little bit. Up here in the top left we have some tools. The first tool on the far left is the zoom tool. As you can see it looks like a magnifying glass with a plus sign in the middle. You click on it and you'll zoom into the photograph. If you hold the alt key down or the option key on Windows you'd click on it you'd be zooming back out. So as you zoom in, zoom out. The next tool over is the hand tool and what you use with that is if you're zoomed in like this you could just grab the photograph by clicking down on your uh, mouse or your pad or whatever and you can move the photograph around. One little tip, if you're in any of these other tools or anywhere else and you want to move the photograph around, as you can see now I'm in the zoom tool and I'd be zooming in, just hold the space key down and you see how it turns into the hand? So you could just move around. So you don't have to click back and forth around here. You could just quickly hold the space bar down and you could drag the photograph around. Another little tip is um, hit Command-0 and you hit Command-0 and it will automatically um, fit the photograph to the frame. So Command-0 just brings it as far as you fitting the whole photograph into the frame. You could hit, also hit Command- minus to zoom out and Command plus to zoom in. Okay. The next is the eyedropper tool and what this is is for white balance. What you would do is you see it turned into an eyedropper. You'd sample a part of the photograph that is uh, neutral, as neutral gray as possible. And when you do that it should adjust the white balance. And I just did and you could see it just barely changed the photograph. So I pretty much nailed the white balance. Um, in camera. But in case you didn't because you had some crazy lighting conditions or something, um, you would use this and anything that the closest to neutral gray and that will get you um, the correct white balance. The next tool is the crop tool 
and um, we could crop the photograph. Um, and in this case, what you would do is you just draw the crop uh, rectangle out the way you want it. And in this case, I want to crop that stuff out on the right. And just hit enter when you're satisfied with the crop. The next tool we won't need on this photograph is the straightening tool. That's if you had a photograph with a crooked horizon or a crooked building or something, uh, you would use that tool to straighten it. Um, what you would do is on the on the strong vertical, that something that should be perfectly vertical or something perfectly horizontal, you would just draw a line with this tool along that what's supposed to be perfectly straight, and then the picture will straighten itself. Next is the red eye tool. Of course, there's no humans in this photograph, but you would use that to get out red eye. The next uh, technically isn't really a tool. It's just uh, uh, your camera raw preferences where you could set some preferences. I just leave them at the default uh, settings. Uh, but you know, you could play around, see if there's something in there that you want to change. The next is the rotate to, uh, tool. So you could rotate it left, rotate it right. In this case, it's kind of, this was the correct orientation the way the butterfly lit was sitting on this leaf sideways but I think it it's easier on the eye to look at like this and once I did that now I don't care for my crop at all so I'm gonna go back this is all non-destructive so I could go back and I could adjust my crop a little bit hit enter when I'm satisfied now that to me is a much better crop okay let's edit some of the photograph here with the panels we're going to go into our basic panel and you still could adjust uh, temperature here by adjusting the slider and the tint in this case I'm not going to on this exposure of course you know if you underexposed it a little you could bring up exposure you could bring exposure down if you overexposed it one uh, tip is you double click on the slider and it will return it where it was so just you know instead of trying to find zero again sometimes it's kinda hard to get it right on zero you could just double click on it um, contrast I'd like this photograph to have a little more contrast I'm gonna turn that up all this is non-destructive again so you could just um, dial these down uh, go back to them later and change them if you want um, highlights uh, bring highlights up just a little bit I'd like the brighter parts of the wings to be just a little brighter um, the shadows, now I don't want to bring shadows all the way up because I don't want my background here to be shown. So I'm, if anything, I'm going to bring shadows down a little bit. And actually bringing it down just slightly helps um, enhance the detail of this butterfly's wings. Whites, um, typically what you would do, now you could just try to move it around and see what you like, but a way to set the white in the black point what they call is you hold the alt key in and when you hold the alt key in while clicking on the slider in the w case of the whites it'll turn the entire screen black and what you would do is you would move it to the right until you started getting some some white indications that would be that color that's coming out in there the further to the right you go the more you'll get um, what you want to do typically what most of us do is you just want a little and as you can see right not even moving it I have a little so I would say my white point is fine now blacks you do the opposite way when you hold the alt key in and click on it the entire screen turns white and you would move it to the left to change the blacks again um, this isn't always the case a lot of times you'll do this and that entire screens white and you have to move it to the left to get some blacks coming through um, in this case, in my what I my personal preference, I normally bring the blacks a little. I have a little more black coming through than I would have had white coming through. So, and plus, in this case, I want this black, this background to be, you know, uh, totally like you can't see nothing back there. So I want it as dark as possible. So that's how you set your white and black point. I want clarity. A uh, clarity is like midtone contrast so you want I'm gonna add a quite a bit to this photograph and I could be I could go on the zoom tool and zoom way in and look and make sure that I'm not adding any noise when I turn it up and you probably can't see in the video but it's pretty clear I'm not adding any noise I hit command zero and I'm back where I could see the photograph full frame I'm gonna add some vibrance now vibrance and saturation if you watch my Lightroom training videos on YouTube um, I explain this a lot. Vibrance um, increases the intensity 
of all the colors that aren't already near or at saturation, whereas saturation increases the color intensity all the way across the board on all the colors. So vibrance tends to bring out some more of the subtle hues that are in the, the photograph. So I prefer, um, usually prefer bringing vibrance up a little. You can bring saturation up a little though, don't be afraid of it. It might be a point, like in this photograph here, this in the raw photograph this looked rather drab and, I, and when I was at this butterfly conservatory this uh, butterfly was very striking like it's starting to look now. Um, the uh, next panel over, now we're done with this panel, we could always come back you could always hit auto and it would adjust these automatically what it thinks it would be but I mean that defi defeats the purpose of us doing post-processing. We want to process it the way we like to look at it. The next is sharpening the first slider will the amount of sharpening applied as you could see right out of the box it had some sharpening applied to it already um, what you would do usually is you zoom in a little bit so you because as you add sharpening you sometimes could introduce some noise so you want to not over sharpen your photograph um, this photograph I found with um, animals you could sharpen them a lot more than with people so um, even or even more than with landscapes. Um, so I'm going to add uh, quite a bit of sharpening as I go. I'm, I'm starting to see now around 100 I'm seeing some noise come in here. So I don't know if you could see that on the video. So I'm going to back it off a little bit until I see that noise dissipate. The radius is the number of pixels that you are applying the sharpening to. You know I'm not going to get too much in detail in all this. Um, I have a Lightroom video. It's in, I think it might be episode five of the Learn Lightroom uh, series, where I I go over each of these sliders um, in detail. The radius slider, though, is the number of pixels wide that are being sharpened. Um, if you bring for fine detail like this butterfly, you could you usually want it a little lower than for wider uh, or something that's not as fine detailed. So something under two pixels for this um, for this uh, type of image. The detail slider is the more detailed you have it the more the, the higher you would want this like this a lot of fine detail in here. Um, the detail though adds the most amount of noise so you got to be careful with the detail slider. So I'll just bring that up until I see I'm not I started getting noise again in this little uh, strip on the edge of the wing so I back it down. Masking is where you would apply the sharpening to where you want it applied. Now I want it applied to this butterfly. I don't need the background sharpened. So I'm going to zoom out by hitting Command-0. If you hold the Alt key in when you do masking and you move it to the right, you'll see now in whatever is, being, is white is where sharpening is being applied. As you move it to the right, you're masking more and more off. So I'm going to do right about there. Now the next sub-panel below that is noise reduction and uh, luminance noise reduction are, is kind of like the grain of film. It's little uh, little pixels that are you know are grainy looking. Um, you zoom in quite a bit into this. Um, you look you know I do have a tiny bit of noise. You'll have it usually on edges and in dark parts of the image and what you do is you just could move this up slowly until dissipates. Um, the detail is similar to the detail here. The finer the detail you have, the more in the right you'd want to go. Uh, luminance contrast is the sometimes you get noise between different shades uh, like the, the you know the lightest part talking touching the darkest part and you'll have some noise in there and this helps reduce that. Um, color contrast is little red, green, and blue dots that form uh, particular now this again is usually in the darker part of the image I don't see any in this image but if I had any I would turn that up and I would adjust the detail until I got rid of all of them so hit command 0 and I'm back out so the detail slider is done camera calibration now uh, the process is there's different versions of Lightroom there was one in 2003 2010 2012 we're going to use the 2012 
version. Um, now this will vary by what camera you're using. Someone shooting Nikon might have different things down here than someone shooting Canon, someone shooting Sony. So in my case I shot with a Nikon D7000. Um, you just try these out and it's going to affect the, it's going to process the photograph differently from all these adjustments we did. Uh, so camera landscape, see it kind of deepen the colors, it made it a little darker. Camera neutral is going to bring everything, you know, more towards the middle. Uh, portrait will be similar, more towards the middle. Standard should be pretty much what we had to begin with. And vivid should be darker and more, more, you know, intense colors. I like vivid, but I think I'm going to stay with standard. Uh, that was more natural looking and more like I, re I remember it. Okay, so you could see we did a lot, a lot of, um, of processing um, and changed this photograph tremendously um, in Adobe Camera Raw. So now that we're satisfied, we have it pre-processed, I guess I'll call it, before we're going into the Elements Editor. Um, you click Open Image and open image will bring it the photograph now into Adobe Photoshop Elements Editor and now we could actually do use the full power of the expert mode of elements um, to uh, modify the photograph. Okay that's it for part three I just wanted to give you an overview of uh, Adobe Camera Raw and what you could do with it and um, in part four, we're going to be in the expert mode of Adobe Photoshop Elements Editor, and we're going to start modifying some photographs. And I'm going to show you um, what all these tools over here do um, in part four. So um, that's it for now. If you guys could, again, do me a favor and subscribe to my channel on YouTube, I'd really appreciate it. And comment and like the videos. And visit my website, anthonymorganti.com. Every day I'm trying to add new content on there about photography and um just stop by and uh, see what we uh, have over there. Everything is free. Again, thanks everyone for uh, watching. And again, and if you subscribe to the channel already, I uh, thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Take care.